I feel like I'm emerging now, uh, genuinely, for the first time from a fear-based life. And as I kind of come up and look around, you know, it, I see how much fear and how many lives are based in fear. And that kind of re-stimulates the stuff that I'm kind of recently leaving. And uh, I guess my question is, is like, you know, uh, how to get on with it better, faster. <laughs> <laughs> I would suggest develop, you know, you continue doing what you're doing, but develop the skills to be able to get out of fear when it happens. Don't be afraid of fear. It may come about because of a high state of stress, because of a shock, because of the group or environment that you're in. It could be there again. Right? The important thing is not whether you have fear or not, but whether you know what to do when you have it. Right? Develop those kinds of skills so that you, you, you will, it, to the best of your ability, never be in a state where you forget what to do. Right? The question comes up, because I, I feel like I'm living in a totally fear-based society. I mean, all the emphasis on security quite a, quite a and... Bit, yes. and it seems like if you really start living free of fear, other people really start fearing you, and then uh, you have to deal with that. Okay, well, let me tell you about this. Okay. There's such a subtle difference here. P other people aren't going to start fearing you unless you've got fear, which means you're afraid of them seeing that you're fearful, or you're afraid of showing any fear. Now you're starting to suppress, and this is going out, and people are going to be aware of it. If you are truly without fear, anybody who comes near you will be without fear. Unless they make you fearful. Okay? It's got to go one way or the other. Okay? But if you're experiencing, and this is okay in, in the process of transition and growth, when we're in the process of transition and growth into new skills, we're going to experience anything that's different from the skill. So if you are working toward eliminating the fearful ideas that you've had in your life and the feelings of fear, you're going to have plenty of opportunity to work with the fears you still have and the fears you still remember. And so sometimes there's going to be a little tension of that, and you'll suppress, no, I'm fury free of fear. I'm not supposed to have any. And all you'll do is do something equivalent to taking cortisone or an aspirin. It'll be there, but you won't feel it. Okay? But you'll get the effects of it by the other people and experiences in your life. Okay? This is why I put the emphasis on not trying to be fearless. I mean, that's a warrior approach, and you can do that if you want to, okay. but instead trying to be skillful so that you know how to change it when fear occurs. Okay. So fear happens, fear happens, but I know what to do about it so it doesn't happen very long. I'll give you an example. And uh, we'll use some depression, for instance, which is anger and fear-based both. People used to ask me in classes, don't you ever get depressed? And I would say yes, sometimes for as long as two minutes. Uh -huh. But not when I was a kid growing up and learning this stuff. Oh, I went through days and sometimes weeks of feeling depressed until I learned what to do about it. Now all that's happened is I'm so aware of what that feels like, the moment it begins to happen, I do something and shift it, not suppress it but change the pattern. Okay? That's the skill part of it. So yeah, I get depressed like anybody else. In fact, any, if you want to talk about the real great masters, think about this. Why do they still meditate? Because it keeps them in practice and brings them back into balance. Right? 